Hello, dear families. So glad you've joined us today. We have a world of knowledge to share with you, filled with the answers to some questions you might have asked yourself or others. We'll talk about why animals have different coverings, why people donate to charities, and so many more intriguing topics. Each one is like a puzzle piece, and by the end we'll have a beautiful picture of how our world works. We have 10 fascinating questions to explore today, so buckle up and get ready for an informative journey. First off, why do animals have fur, feathers, or scales, and how does it protect them? Let's dive into the world of animal coverings. Animals, in all their beautiful diversity, have different types of coverings like fur, feathers, or scales. But have you ever wondered why? Well, these coverings play a crucial role in their survival. Take fur, for instance. Fur is like a cozy blanket for animals keeping them warm in chilly weather. Picture a polar bear in the icy Arctic. Its thick fur keeps it toasty even in the freezing cold. Then we have feathers, the unique covering of birds. These aren't just for show. Feathers enable birds to fly, keep them warm, and some birds even use them to attract mates. Picture a peacock. Its magnificent feathers aren't just for our admiration, they play a role in their survival too. Lastly, let's talk about scales. Scales act like a suit of armor, protecting animals from predators and harsh environments. Think of a fish in the water or a snake in the desert. The scales cover their bodies, shielding them from harm. But that's not all. These coverings also help animals blend into their environments, a trick known as camouflage. This means a snow hare can stay hidden in the white snow, or a green iguana can remain unseen in leafy trees. So, whether it's fur, feathers, or scales, each has its own unique purpose in the animal kingdom. Now, why do people donate to charities? Well, let's dive into it. At its core, a charity is an organization set up to provide help and raise money for those in need. It's all about giving, isn't it? And there's a multitude of reasons why people decide to give. One of the most common reasons is to lend a hand to those who are less fortunate. It's a way to level the playing field, to ensure that everyone, regardless of their circumstances, gets a fair shot at life. But there's more to it than that. Many people donate to support causes that they genuinely care about. It could be anything from protecting the environment, funding medical research, promoting education, or even saving endangered species. When people donate to these causes, they are effectively investing in a better future. And there's yet another angle to consider. Did you know that making a donation to a registered charity could also provide a tax benefit? That's right! In many countries, when you donate to a charity, you can claim a deduction on your taxable income. It's a win-win. You help others, and you get a little something back in return. So whether it's to help those in need, support a beloved cause, or receive a tax benefit, donating to charities offers people a chance to make a real difference. So, donating to charities is a way people can make a positive impact in the world. Isn't that something worth considering? Next, why do we need to protect our ears from loud noises like fireworks? Well, let's dive into this. Our ears are like a sophisticated concert hall designed to pick up a range of sounds. They consist of three parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Each part has a special role to play in helping us hear the world around us. When a sound wave enters our ear, it travels through the outer ear, strikes the eardrum in the middle ear, which then vibrates. These vibrations are picked up by tiny bones, amplified, and sent to the inner ear. The inner ear, or the cochlea, is filled with tiny hair cells that move with these vibrations and send signals to our brain. That's how we hear. However, when loud noises come into play, like the bang of a firework or the blare of a concert speaker, they can be too much for these delicate hair cells. Over time, exposure to these loud noises can damage these cells, leading to hearing loss. That's why it's so important to protect our ears when we know we'll be around loud sounds. Using ear protection like earplugs or earmuffs can help reduce the intensity of these sounds and keep our ears safe. So the next time you're planning to enjoy a fireworks display or attend a loud concert, don't forget your ear protection. Remember, it's important to keep our ears safe to maintain our hearing health. Moving on, why do companies sponsor events and sports teams? Picture this. 
a world-renowned sports event with the logo of a certain brand splashed across every banner and billboard. That's corporate sponsorship in action. But why do companies do this? Well, it all boils down to marketing strategies. Companies use sponsorships as a way to increase their brand's visibility. It's like saying, hey, we're here and we're part of something you love. This helps them reach potential customers who may not be aware of their brand. Imagine you're watching your favorite sports team and you see a company's logo on the team's jerseys. That logo becomes associated with the excitement of the game, the joy of a win, and the camaraderie of being a fan. This emotional connection can influence your perception of the brand in a positive way, making you more likely to choose it in the future. Sponsorships also help companies to build a positive reputation. By supporting an event or a sports team, they are showing their commitment to the community. It's a way of saying, we care about the things you care about. For instance, think of a popular soda brand sponsoring a global music festival or a tech giant backing a major esports tournament. These sponsorships not only get their brand names out there, but also connect them with a cause or passion their target audience cares about. So, sponsorship is a win-win situation for both the company and the sponsored party. The company gets increased visibility and reputation, and the event or team gets the financial support they need to thrive. Next up, why did the world come together to eradicate deadly diseases? Well, just imagine a world without the fear of diseases like smallpox or polio. It sounds like a dream, doesn't it? But this dream has been turned into reality through global health initiatives. You see, diseases don't respect borders. They can travel from one corner of the globe to another, affecting everyone in their path. That's why countries around the world decided to join hands and fight these deadly diseases together. This united front is not just about saving lives, but it's also about improving the quality of life for everyone. When we eradicate a disease, we're doing more than just getting rid of a health problem. We're giving people the chance to live healthier, longer lives. Children can grow up without the fear of certain diseases, while adults can focus on building a better future for their families without the constant worry of falling ill. Moreover, eradicating diseases can have a positive impact on economies too. When people are healthy, they can work, they can learn, they can contribute to their communities. This leads to a more prosperous and productive society. So, you see, eradicating deadly diseases is not just a medical issue, it's a matter of global solidarity. It's about humanity standing together against a common enemy. And the best part? We've seen that it's possible. With continued effort and collaboration, we can win this fight. Working together, we can conquer even the most formidable health challenges. Now, why do we need friends? This question is more profound than it seems at first glance. The answer lies not just in our hearts, but also in our brains. You see, as humans, we are social creatures. We thrive on connection and interaction. Friendship offers us the gift of companionship. It's an antidote to loneliness, a safe harbor in the tumultuous sea of life. Friends are the ones you laugh with, cry with, and journey through life with. They are the ones who stand by your side, celebrating your triumphs and comforting you in your trials. But the beauty of friendship extends beyond companionship. It's also about support. Friends bolster us when we falter, lift us when we fall. They provide a strong pillar of emotional support, helping us navigate the intricate maze of life. They are our cheerleaders, our sounding boards, our confidants. And then there's the magic of shared experiences. These are the threads that weave the tapestry of friendship, shared experiences, whether they are moments of joy or times of adversity, bind friends together. They create a shared history, a collective memory, a bond that transcends time and distance. Friends are also mirrors, reflecting back to us who we are and who we can become. They challenge us, encourage us, and inspire us to grow. So when you think about it, friends aren't just people we hang out with. They are our chosen family, our tribe. They enrich our lives in ways that are immeasurable. Friends truly are the family we choose for ourselves. Why is it important to have laws that protect the environment? Well, 
Imagine our world as a house. Without rules, the house could quickly become messy and unlivable. Environmental laws are the rules of our global house, helping us keep our planet clean, safe, and sustainable. Firstly, environmental laws play a crucial role in preserving our natural resources. They help protect our forests, oceans, and wildlife from overexploitation and destruction. Imagine a world without the chirping of birds or the rustle of leaves in the wind. It's a bit gloomy, isn't it? Thankfully, these laws help safeguard the diversity and beauty of our natural world. Secondly, these laws prevent pollution by regulating the disposal of waste and emissions from factories. Picture a beautiful beach, but instead of sand and shells, you see plastic bags and bottles. Not a pretty sight, right? These laws help us avoid such scenarios, ensuring that our air, water, and land stay clean and healthy. Finally, environmental laws promote sustainable practices. They encourage us to use renewable energy, recycle more, and reduce our carbon footprint. Imagine turning on your light switch, and instead of using energy from burning coal, it's powered by the sun or wind. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? So, why is it important to have laws that protect the environment? Because they help us live in harmony with nature preserving the Earth's beauty and resources for ourselves and future generations. Environmental laws help ensure we have a healthy and sustainable planet for future generations. Why do engineers design toys and how do they make them fun and safe? Well, toys are more than just fun and games. Every toy that you see has been carefully designed by engineers. They're the creative minds behind your favorite action figures cuddly teddy bears, and challenging puzzles. Firstly, engineers design toys to stimulate our imagination, promote learning, and bring joy. They think about what kids might enjoy, what might challenge them, and what might help them learn new things. They consider colors, sounds, and shapes that can engage a child's senses and curiosity. But fun is only one part of the equation. Safety is a paramount concern. Engineers need to ensure that toys are safe for their intended age group. They consider every detail, from the materials used, to the size of the parts, to the way the toy is assembled. They ensure the toy doesn't have sharp edges, small parts that could be swallowed, or toxic materials. They also adhere to strict safety standards and regulations. These standards vary by country, but generally, they involve rigorous testing to ensure the toy can withstand rough play without breaking or causing harm. Finally, many toys are designed with an educational aspect in mind. They might help kids develop motor skills, learn about the world, or understand complex concepts in a fun, hands-on way. So, a lot of thought and care goes into creating the toys we love. Next, why do we have different types of clothing, and how do engineers make them? Well. Clothing is more than just a way to cover our bodies. It's a blend of functionality, culture, and personal style. Let's start with functionality. Depending on where we live, our clothes might need to protect us from extreme heat, cold, or rain. Hence, we have swimwear for the beach, sweaters for the winter, and raincoats for those drizzly days. Then, there are cultural factors. In some parts of the world, Traditional attire reflects a rich heritage and customs passed down through generations. For instance, the kimonos in Japan or the saris in India are not just outfits, but symbols of history and identity. And of course, we can't forget about personal style. Clothes allow us to express our individuality. They can be vibrant and bold or simple and understated, just like our personalities. Now who makes all this possible? Textile engineers. They're the unsung heroes behind our wardrobes. They use science and technology to create fabrics that are comfortable, durable, and safe. They also work closely with fashion designers to ensure that the clothes we wear are not just practical, but also trendy and fashionable. So next time you put on your favorite outfit, remember there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. From the weather conditions it's designed for, to the cultural significance it may hold, and the personal style it helps you express. From comfort to style, each piece of clothing has its own purpose and story. Finally, why do people pay different levels of tax? Well, let's dive right in. The answer lies in a system called progressive taxation. 
This is a little like a staircase, where each step represents a different income level. As you climb higher up the income staircase, the percentage of your income that you pay in tax also increases. This means that those who earn more, pay more. But why is this the case? The idea behind progressive taxation is rooted in fairness. It's generally agreed that people who have higher incomes can afford to contribute a higher proportion of their earnings in taxes without it impacting their quality of life. Now let's take a moment to think about what these taxes are used for. Taxes are the main source of income for governments, and they're used to fund all sorts of things that make our society run smoothly. This includes public services like schools, hospitals, and roads, even things we might not immediately think of, like parks, libraries, and even this very video you're watching, they're all supported in some way by taxes. So while no one really enjoys parting with their hard-earned money, taxes are a necessary part of life. They enable governments to provide us with essential services and to invest in things that improve our quality of life. Taxes, while not always popular, play a crucial role in supporting our society. And that, my friends, is the story of taxation. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. We've learned why animals have fur, feathers, or scales, and how it protects them. We've delved into why people donate to charities and the importance of protecting our ears from loud noises. We've explored why companies sponsor events and the global efforts in eradicating deadly diseases. We've also talked about the importance of friends, environmental laws, toy and clothing design, and even the intricacies of taxation. Thank you for joining us on this educational journey. Good night, and we'll see you next time. Hello, family. Welcome to our learning journey today. We've got an exciting lineup of topics to explore. First, we'll delve into the reasons why some people prefer leasing cars rather than buying them outright. Then, we're going to look into the gig economy and understand why people take on freelance jobs. Next, we'll uncover why the world has banded together to tackle climate change. Moving on, we'll discover the fascinating world of hybridizing animals and plants. We'll also learn why it's important to be gentle when applying band-aids and why countries import and export goods. Ever wondered why governments provide unemployment benefits? We'll find that out too. We'll also explore why we need to be gentle with our furry friends to build trust. Finally, we'll delve into why people choose certain careers and how social media has transformed global connections. Are you ready? Let's dive right in. First off, have you ever wondered why some people lease cars instead of buying them outright? Let's dive into the world of car leasing and understand what it's all about. Car leasing is like renting a car but for a longer period, usually two to four years. It's a bit like having a long-term rental car. At the end of the lease, you return the car to the leasing company. Now, why would someone choose to lease a car instead of buying one? There are several reasons. One of the main attractions of leasing is that you can drive a brand new car every few years without the hefty price tag of buying it outright. You get to enjoy the latest models with the newest technology and safety features. Isn't that exciting? Leasing also means you don't have to worry about the car's depreciation. With a lease, you only pay for the car's value that you use during the lease term, not the entire cost of the car. So, you're not stuck with a car that's worth less than what you paid for it. Another advantage is that leased cars usually come with comprehensive warranties. This means that if anything goes wrong with the car during the lease period, it's typically covered by the warranty. That's some peace of mind right there. But just like anything else, leasing has its drawbacks too. For instance, leased cars come with mileage limits, and going over these can lead to extra charges. Also, you have to keep the car in good condition, or you might be charged for excessive wear and tear when you return it. Leasing isn't for everyone. Some people prefer to buy a car outright and keep it for many years. They like the idea of eventually owning the car free and clear, without any monthly payments. So it's all about weighing options and making the best choice for each individual's circumstances. Whether you decide to lease or buy, the important thing is finding the car that fits your needs and budget. After all, the journey is just as important as the destination, especially when you're driving a car you love. Scene Script Next, let's explore why many people are taking on freelance jobs in what's called the gig economy. 
If you've ever heard the phrase gig economy, you might be wondering what it means. Well, it's a fancy term for a market where people take on temporary flexible jobs. These jobs could be anything from writing articles, designing logos, to even walking dogs or delivering groceries. Now, why would someone choose to work in the gig economy? Well, there are a few reasons. The first is flexibility. In the gig economy, you can choose when you work, where you work, and even what kind of work you do. Want to spend the morning working on a project and the afternoon at the park? You can do that. Want to work late at night when everyone else is asleep? That's also an option. The second reason is control. When you're your own boss, you get to decide which projects to take on. If a project doesn't interest you or it's not worth your time, you can simply say no. Sounds great, doesn't it? But like most things in life, the gig economy has its downsides too. One of the biggest challenges is the lack of job security. Unlike a traditional job where you might have a contract or a steady paycheck, gig work can be unpredictable. One month you might have plenty of work, the next you might have none. Another challenge is the lack of benefits. Many gig workers don't get the perks that come with traditional jobs like health insurance, paid time off, or retirement plans. Despite these challenges, many people still choose to participate in the gig economy. For some, the benefits outweigh the downsides. For others, it's a way to make ends meet when traditional jobs are hard to come by. It's clear that the gig economy offers flexibility, but it also comes with its own set of challenges. Now, let's talk about something really important. Climate change. Climate change is a big word, but what does it really mean? Well, it's all about how our planet's weather patterns are changing over time, and not in a good way, I'm afraid. You see, our Earth is getting warmer, and this is causing all sorts of problems. Imagine you're a polar bear. Your home is the Arctic, a place that's always been icy and cold. But because the Earth is warming up, the ice is melting. And without ice, where will you live? Where will you find food? This is just one example of how climate change can affect the lives of creatures big and small. But it's not just about the polar bears, it's about us too. As the Earth gets warmer, we see more extreme weather events like heat waves and heavy rainfalls. We also see the sea levels rise which can lead to flooding in coastal areas where many of us live. So why is the world coming together? To address climate change? Well, because it's a problem that affects all of us. No matter where we live, what language we speak, or what food we eat, we all share the same home, planet Earth. And to protect our home, we need to work together. Many countries are now taking steps to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases they emit. These are the gases that trap heat in our atmosphere and cause the earth to warm up. People are also doing their part. They're planting trees, recycling, and using less energy. Even small actions can make a big difference when we all do them together. But there's still a lot of work to do. We need to keep learning about climate change and keep finding ways to fight it. Because the future of our planet depends on it. And remember, it's not just about protecting our home for us, but for all the creatures we share it with. From the polar bears in the Arctic, to the fish in the sea, to the birds in the sky, climate change affects us all, and it's up to all of us to help fight it. Ever heard of a Liger or a Tangelo? Let's talk about why people hybridize animals and plants. Now, hybridization might sound like a complex term, but it's actually quite simple. It's the process of combining the genetic material of two different species to create a new one. Think of it as a natural experiment where mother nature herself is the scientist. So why do we do it? Well, there are quite a few reasons. In the world of plants, hybridization can help us create crops that are more resilient, better tasting, or even more colorful. Imagine a tomato plant resistant to frost or an apple that's extra juicy. That's the magic of plant hybridization. But it's not just about plants. Animal hybridization also exists, although it's a bit more complicated. We've seen some fascinating creatures like the liger, a mix between a lion and a tiger, or the mule, a cross between a horse and a donkey. Such hybrids often combine the best traits of their parents, like strength, speed, or endurance. Now, let's not forget that every coin has two sides. 
While hybridization can result in some amazing species, it also has potential drawbacks. Hybrids can sometimes struggle with health issues, and if they're infertile, they can't contribute to the gene pool of their parent species. Also, when it comes to animals, there are ethical considerations. Is it right to create a new species just because we can? It's a question that doesn't have an easy answer. In the end, whether it's creating a new variety of rose or a new animal species, hybridization is a tool. Like any tool, it can be used for good or ill. But one thing's for sure. It's a fascinating glimpse into the wonders of life and its endless possibilities. Hybridization can create some truly unique species, but it's important to consider the ethical implications. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. Let's recap what we've learned. We started our journey by understanding why some people prefer leasing cars over buying them. It's all about flexibility and affordability. Then, we dived into the vibrant world of the gig economy, where people take on freelance jobs for independence and diverse opportunities. We also explored how the world is uniting to combat climate change, a global problem that needs everyone's attention and action. After that, we looked at the fascinating process of hybridization in plants and animals, a method used for creating stronger, more resilient species. We learned about the importance of being gentle with band-aids and our furry friends, teaching us kindness and care. We also touched upon the global trade of goods and the role of unemployment benefits in supporting people during tough times. Lastly, we delved into career choices and the transformative power of social media in connecting people worldwide. Remember, every day is a chance to learn something new. Good night, family, and keep exploring.